What's up guys, welcome back to O'Neill Code. Let's say you were given a binary tree and asked to find its maximum depth. How would we approach this? Well first let's make sure we know the difference between the depth and height of a binary tree. If we look at the tree in this example, you can see that node 6 has the longest path from the root. But what is its height and depth? Well the depth is calculated by traversing from the root to a given node, while the height is calculated by traversing from a leaf to a given node. So node 6 in this example would have a height of 0 because it's the furthest node from the top and a depth of 4 because it's the deepest node. The root of the tree would have a height of 4 and a depth of 0. The max height and depth will be the same for the entire tree, but they differ for each node. It's easy to remember that the root will always be at the top, giving it the largest height, while its depth will always be 0. It's the opposite for the leaves as they are the furthest from the root. Their height will always be 0. So to find the maximum depth, we can use recursion. We can check each node's left edge for another node. If we get a hit, we can move that node by passing its current node's left as a parameter into the function. If we do not find the left, we can check the right doing the same thing. If there are neither a left or right, we can return a value signifying its level of depth. Here's what it'll look like in code. First, we create a static method called max depth that takes a parameter type tree node. A tree node is going to have a left and right link pointing to its next node. As I said before, we are first going to check for a node to its left. This is where the recursion comes in. We call max depth and pass in root left. The return value is going to be held by an integer called left, and it represents the depth of the node passed in. I also said that if we do not find anything to its left, we do the same with the right. So we call max depth passing in root right. We can add an if statement to check if the tree node passed in is equal to null. If it is equal to null, we return zero because it will not have a valid depth. Lastly, we need to return a value signifying its depth. Well, we can do this by taking the max value of the left and right values. Then we add one to it for the current node. Once it's returned, it will continue its recursion until a final return value is given. That's all you need to do to find the max depth. As simple as this code looks, the recursion can be a little tricky, so I'm going to walk through what goes on here. We first start by passing in the root of the binary tree. We then check if it's equal to null. Since it is not, we move on to the first part of recursion. I'll add a timeline to help demonstrate where we are in the recursion process. It's going to get a little tricky once we work our way down the tree, so hopefully this helps you all visualize it. So we pass in the left node of the root into max depth. This will move us down to node 2. Now we start the method over and check if the root is null. And just a reminder, when I refer to the root going forward, I am not talking about the root that I originally passed in for the entire tree. I am now referring to the node I passed in recursively. I can still refer to this as a root because technically, it is a root of another subtree that we will check. But anyway, since it is not equal to null, we again pass in the roots left. This will move us down to node 4. We start the method over and we check if node 4 is equal to null. Since it is not, we again pass in the roots left. Here is where we're going to run into our first null. Node 4 does not have any leaves under it. Its left is equal to null, so we're going to have to return 0. We go up a level recursion and make the integer left equal to 0. This is the first time we are setting one of these left or right integer values. We are currently in node 4's recursion, and since the left has been set, we can move down to the right. So now we pass in root right into max depth. This time when it returns, it will set the right variable. Since node 4 doesn't have any leaves to its right, the root right we pass in is going to be null. This means we are going to return 0. We move back up to node 4's recursion level and set the right variable to 0. Now we move on to the last part for node 4. We check the max for the left and right values we found earlier. Since we return 0 for both, the max will be 0. Then we add 1 to represent the current node we're on. We return 1 and move back up to node 2's recursion. This will set node 2's left to 1. So this basically shows the depth to the left of node 2 is 1 because there's only one node below it. Since we have that, we need to do the same thing with node 2's right. We pass in node 2's right and check if it is equal to null. Since it points to node 5, we continue on with node 5. 
We have to check node 5 to the left, so we pass into max depth. We check if it is equal to null, and it is not because node 6 is there. So now we need to check if node 6 is any nodes to its left. We pass in node 6's left, and we check for null. Since it is equal to null, we return 0. This will set node 6's left variable to 0. We move on and pass node 6's right into max depth. We have to check if it is equal to null, and since it is, we return 0. This will set node 6's right variable to 0, just as it was for the left, since there are no leaves below it. We lastly need to check for the max of the left and right variables for node 6. Since both are 0, the max will also be 0. We add 1 for its current node, and we return 1. This will bring us back up to node 5's recursion, and we'll set the left variable equal to 1. Since there is no node to its right, it will return 0 and set its right to 0. Now we check the max of the left and right variables for node 5. Left is equal to 1 since we return that from node 6, and its right is 0 because there is no node below it. The max will be 1, and we will add 1 to it for the current node returning 2. This will bring us back up to node 2, and we will set its right variable equal to 2. Since we found its left already earlier in the process, and now that we have its right, we can check the max of both of them. 2 will be the max, and we add 1 to it for the current node returning 3. This will move us back up to node 1's recursion, and it will set its left variable to 3. Now looking at this, you can see that there's only one node to its right. It will go through the same process we have been doing, and it will set node 1's right variable to 1. We then need to find the max for node 1. Since the left is 3 and the right is 1, the max will be 3. We add 1 for the current node, and we return 4 exiting the program because it's the last level of recursion. And there you have it. The max depth for the binary tree is 4 after all that recursion. Those four lines of code do a ton of work to find that answer. So hopefully now you understand how we find the max depth of the binary tree traversing the tree using recursion. If you have any questions at all, please write them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. Peace out.